It's Alan again from Plangora, and today I'm going to show you guys how to install Elixir and Erlang on Mac using ASDF. Last time I showed you guys using ASDF on Ubuntu, but thanks to Mac being so similar to Linux, we can install in a somewhat similar, but actually a much, much easier way. I'm going to show you how. Let's go ahead. Let's get started now. The first thing, because this is a brand new uh, installation, we're going to run Xcode uh, select install. This is going to install the developer tools for Mac. You just click install, then click agree. And that should just go ahead and uh, find all of the uh, compilers and uh, other kinds of tools we need, we need to actually compile and uh, run everything. So let's go ahead and let's let this run for a moment. Fantastic. Now that that's installed, we need to go ahead and click done. Now, off screen, I went ahead and copied this link. So what you want to do is you want to go to brew.sh. This is brew.sh in your web browser to get uh, this link. And we're going to install Homebrew. Let me copy and paste it into here. This is just a self-install script. And then we need to type our administrative password. It's going to install Homebrew for us. So Homebrew is a package tool written for Mac, which is just like the apt-get or aptitude uh, get system that we had to use oh, when we installed on Ubuntu. But this one obviously is for uh, Mac. Cool, now that that's installed. Now the next thing that we need to do is uh, to get all of the dependencies, we're going to have to actually install Java. We use that with brew cask because it's a, uh, it's a little bit hard to explain, but this is the command to install Java using homebrew on Mac. And so you might be asking, if we're going to be using Erlang and Elixir, why do we need Java? Well, the nice part about uh, Erlang is that you can actually interface with Java and C, and Java and C are probably the two most popular uh, programming languages out there in the enterprise. So if we install Java, then we can actually get the bindings for how to interact with Java directly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install that just to make my life easier in case we ever really need it. We have it already there. Now enter our admin password, and now it's installed. Now the next thing that we need to install is a couple different package things and we're going to use homebrew again so brew install this is going to use brew install instead of brew cask i don't have the time to get into why the two are different but uh, i would say things that require things that are going to be used in the command line we use brew install things that we can use outside of the command line or the terminal we can use brew cask we usually use java outside of the terminal but in any case i'm not going to digress right now so brew install wx mac just to get the wx uh, window system and bop for generating documentation if we need it and the last thing that we need is asdf which is the tool that we used last time and we're going to use this time so now we're just going to let this install for us Great. Now that that's all ready to go, we just have one small step. So if we notice that we're actually running, let's do it this way. If we check the info on ASDF, we can see that it's installed uh, into 070, 070. 
So now we just need to add this into our path. And then I did this offline with a nice command. I'm going to share with you guys my uh, little cheat sheet so you have it. But we just need to run this. Make sure that the 070, this file is in our bash RC. And then we just need to source the bash RC file. And now we have ASDF ready to go. So again, like before, ASDF, plugin, add, Erlang. ASDF, plugin, and Elixir. And now we use ASDF to install Erlang. And it again, at this time, is 21.2.6. For the latest version of Erlang. And you can see it's using curl in the background, which is uh, another tool. And this is going to go ahead and download and install 21.2.6 on our machine, built right on our machine, too. Awesome, now we can go ahead and install uh, our latest version of Elixir, which at this time is 181. And because we're using 21 for OTP, we should use 181 OTP 21. Great. Now we should set these as global. 21.2.6. Global Elixir one a one OTP twenty one and let's see if this is working. Great, fantastic one eight one using OTP twenty one. So that's it for today. Please remember to subscribe for our latest videos, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.